Hi, I'm back. Uh, thanks so much for all the positive comments you've provided, all of you have provided on those first few videos I posted. Uh, it's, you work by yourself in here, you know, you, you never know how others are looking at your work. Um, you know, sometimes you get frustrated, you know, you, you, all, you see all the, the things you could do differently. So, but, um, but I'm having fun doing it. Um, but I'm going to change things up a little bit on this video. I am, uh, uh, after working on that craftsman kit that I just completed and working on all those tiny details and, and, you know, all the, um, you know, all that goes into that. I, I needed to, I needed to change things up. I had some wiring, uh, that I needed to finish. And I thought this would be a good time to show something that I think I did really well. Um, and these, these, these control panels that I have throughout the layout. Uh, I've looked online, I've seen a lot of really nice uh, work, nothing that really was exactly what, what I was looking for. And uh, after many iterations and uh, you know, picking and choosing little aspects of others, what others have done, um, I put together uh, and, and created these, these control panels. Um, and I really like them and I wanna share how I did it, especially when we get inside and you kind of look at some of the wiring. For me, with this layout, um, and some of the things that were important with the control panels, um, one is uh, minimization of wiring. And so I will say that um, this particular panel, as I've done it, is very specific to the NCE um, uh, DCC technology. And that's because uh, inside, as you'll see, the core to this is the NCE uh, mini processor, um, uh, mini panel, is the, I think what they call it, but it's essentially a processor. Um, and that, what that does for me is it allows me to do a lot of work here at the control panel without having to run wires into the pa panel to do it. And again, as I mentioned, it's a large la layout. I have a lot of wires um, underneath the, the layout. Maybe I'll, I'll have a video on, on some of the wiring techniques that I did. Um, so anyway, we'll get to that. I'll open it up. You'll see what's inside. I put together a nice diagram to show the, the schematic of the wiring. It was a little complex, but, um, but and, and the other thing I want to do is I wanted to make these very easy to do um, and very clean on the inside. So again, I think you'll see that when I open it up. So let's go over to my workbench and I'll show you um, the materials I use to put this together. Everything very accessible. Uh, and again, I, I hope you find this is very easy to do. This is gonna be a long video, a lot going on, warn you ahead of time, but uh, hopefully you find it uh, um, informative. Okay, we're over at my workbench and I've laid out um, the tools that I'm using for building my control panel. Um, let me show you what those are. And um, everything I have here was either um, purchased on, from Amazon or at Home Depot. So very, very accessible. I, I like that. Um, so in terms of the frame, um, I'm using a one by three piece of hardwood. Uh, and I'll create my, my box to fit the size that I'm looking for. Most of my control panels are eight and a half by 14. Um, and the thing that um, I, I'll mention is I've used narrower boards in the past, um, but um, the trade-off is that gives you less room for your wire inside. The three inch, I think is a nice balance. It's not sticking out too far from my layout. Um, but it does give me a lot of room to have my wires so I'm not stuffing them in and risking shorting a, an LED bulb. So that's what I landed on. Um, I'll show you uh, how this frame looks built, but just um, uh, one other comment. I'll, I'll, in order to do that and make it look finished, I'll cut all the edges at 45 degrees and um, staple and glue them together, and that's held in all cases very well okay um and then in terms of the uh the um, control panel face that you see let's pull this out from here um that's done with 
two sheets of plexiglass with a piece of photographic paper in between. And these are the actual sizes I'll, I'll purchase. So in terms of the plexiglass, these are um, about eight, about $10 a sheet. This is uh, 11 by 14. I'll cut this to eight and a half by 11, and I'll do that in a minute. Um, and I'll, as I mentioned, I use two sheets, one in front of the photographic paper and one in back to hold everything together. Um, you don't need to use plexi in the back. Um, there's no reason for it to necessarily be um, clear in the back, but uh, it is a very firm backing and most importantly, it's very thin. So, um, and when you get into some of the, when you put it together, you know, that's what you'll need. Photographic paper, I'm, I just buy these bigger sheets and just kind of cut them to size. Um, this is 11 by 17, which I'll cut to eight and a half by 11. I'm oh, sorry, eight and a half by 14. So that's the, um, the, the front end, the facade of it. Um, and then inside, I will go over and open it up and you'll see how all these little pieces come together, but just to show you them in their, well, I think I forgot to mention, um, I do hold the frame together with these corner brackets, again, purchased at Home Depot. Um, you'll see how I do that later, but that holds it to my, um, to my layout. Um, so in terms of the wiring, um, my wiring approach is very specific to NCE uh, because I'm using a, something that they call a mini panel um, to do all my programming. I don't know the other DCC systems if they have something equivalent, but in terms of how I organize my wiring and how I throw the switches or um, uh, execute um, macros, everything is done from the mini panel. And I'll talk about the advantages of this when I get over and open up um, the control panel in a minute. Um, you'll see inside that I um, will be using these terminal blocks. Um, one or two of these, depending on how many switches you are um, trying to control from uh, one control panel. And then um, two of these nice little um, terminal blocks where you're having one feed come in that can then um, go out into, into uh, to 12. Um, what's nice about this, again, this keeps with my theme of organizing my wiring inside. And um, um, I really like, really, really like those. Again, bought those on Amazon. Um, I use three millimeter LED bulbs. Um, I, you'll see later, I'm using the green ones and I'll buy these online. I've got all these other colors and the greens are empty in this one. Um, maybe someday I'll figure out, you know, or have a use for some of the other colors, but, um, but um, I'm using those bulbs. Um, in terms of the switches, um, single pole, double throw, and um, again, bought on Amazon. The important thing here, I think I have one empty here, is uh, that um, they are momentary switches. So on, off, on, and everything is kind of defaulting back into the off position. Um, that is very important when you're using um, this approach. And I found these switches that came with those little sleeves, um, not necessary, but I think they add a really nice look um, when you get back to the panel. I love the way um, it kind of finishes off um, the control panel. Um, if you are executing a macro, uh, rather than toggling a switch, um, you would need some push buttons this, the, the box that we're gonna open up doesn't have any push buttons. I don't have any macros that I execute from this panel. Um, but if you did and you know, um, you can just do that with a push button. I mount my LEDs to the control panel using these Pico um, panel clips. Um, I, I don't know if there's any other products out there that do the same, but um, these work really, really nice with the three millimeter LED bulbs. Um, and I like the way it looks and it's very, they're very easy to use. 
Um, in terms of my resistor, um, I'm using uh, 1200 ohm resistors, quarter watt. Um, in truth, I, my, I think my bulbs are a little brighter than I like, um, but, um, but this, but I, but they're fine, and um, and I have been using these. It's been working, so I've just kind of kept with it. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not a wiring expert. Uh, I probably could tone those bulbs down a bit uh, if I knew more about elect electrical, but this is working very, it looks nice and it's working. And then the other thing that I've been using is these um, heat, I don't know what they're called, what their technical term is, but when I'm soldering my wires to the LED bulbs, I'll protect that connection with these little sleeves. Um, melt them in and um, they're not perfect uh, um, sometimes I especially when you get right to the point where the wire is meeting the bulb um, these sleeves don't necessarily hit that point and I've had some instances where I'm getting these bulbs shorting out because I'm I'm not covering that wiring enough and um, but they work a lot better than every other method I found so far. So that I think covers all my tools. And so what I thought I would do next is walk over to my computer and show you how I create the, um, the image that you're looking at on the control panel. And then we'll keep, keep on moving through. I moved over to my computer so I can show you how I create the image that goes on my control panel. I use Google Slides, you can use PowerPoint or any drawing program. What you're really just trying to do is create some depiction of the area that you'll be controlling the switches for. So this, as you can see, is that area, Red, Silver Reef, Red Rock Canyon, very specific, just a, a portion of my entire layout. And the rest is up to you on how you design it. I like to put a logo on there to depict that I'm doing Union Pacific, uh, create some color background. I like the blue, I think it stands out nice with the white background. And then I put my switches at the bottom. Some people will put their switches right on the track itself. I like to put the switches on the bottom and then I have LED bulbs that show which direction which, which light line is open. The, blue, the black dots you see on the layout, I'll put on my designs so that when I'm drilling the holes, I'll know exactly where to drill so that the LEDs are organized in a way that makes sense. So it's, it's very simple. And then we'll head over to my workbench now and the next thing you'll see me do is drill out the holes in the plexiglass that this fits into, and we'll move along the process. Okay, I'm back at my desk here and ready to drill the holes in the plexi. Um, so the first thing to do is really secure it, uh, and you'll see that I'm actually going to have both pieces of plexi. Um, with the uh, image in between. So this is how they will show up when we put it on, mounted on the, um, on the control panel uh, wood. But um, very important to get this really secure and also very important to use the right bit sizes. So um, I put together, uh, uh, this is a, a PDF I'll be sharing, uh, I put together a little uh, cheat sheet on all the bit sizes and the various uh, things that we might be drilling for. In this case, we're gonna be doing toggle switches and LEDs and the fascia screws. And um, I always keep my little handy uh, guide here to make sure I'm using the right bits. <clears throat> I need the first one's a 15 60 fourths. So, and that is for the toggle switches. And, um, as I mentioned, uh, it's very important to have this very secure so things aren't moving. And as you're drilling these holes, go slow. 
Um, if you go too fast, uh, the bit sometimes catches and you can crack the glass. So uh, you'll get a hang of it, but uh, better slower than not. And you'll go through, you know, the two pieces of plexi and the, the photo paper. And I put a piece of wood in between or at the bottom and I can tell when I'm through when I start seeing kind of sawdust pop up it means I've gotten through my what I need to get through and then kind of reverse that out. Um, and then I'll just go through and do that for the rest of the um, uh, rest of the uh, uh, holes. Um, and then um, the other thing I wanted to show, uh, well then I'll also show um, the toggle switches. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the LEDs. Um, <clears throat> so kind of drill those holes in. Just give you one, and then I'll come back and do the rest of them. You don't need to see me do each of these holes. Um, definitely want to get them exactly on those black dots. Now here, um, <laughs> it's actually super important why I stopped. For the um, for the LEDs, you'll see on my guide here that I, I have a front and back, meaning front plexiglass, back plexiglass. And for the uh, toggle switches, it, it goes the same size all the way through. But for the LEDs, you'll see that the first, the front hole on the side facing out that we'll see, the hole is a little bit smaller than the back. And the reason for that, again, less, uh, lesson learned in the past, is that when I put these um, LED holders in, I need a little bit extra room for, the, um, for these little uh, extenders here to separate as the, as the bulb goes in here. And so you just need that back hole to be a little bit bigger. And the way I do that is um, I will drill this front hole slowly as before, and I'll get it to the point where I'm just getting into the back piece of plexi. I can just keep look, looking and see when I break through the paper. And what I'm essentially doing, there it goes, what I'm essentially doing is I'm marking the backboard, uh, the back piece of plexi where I want to drill the bigger hole. The reason I do that and not just go all the way through is that sometimes um, when you have a hole that's smaller and then you take a larger bit and go through the hole, um, it, it doesn't drill very well and you can, again, crack the plexi. So that's how I'll, I'll drill those holes. And, and then the last one, again, I'll go through that in a minute and finish those up. And the last ones I'll do are the, oops, are the facades, uh, are the holders, the fascia holders, I should say. And I'll generally put uh, two in the corners and uh, so four across the top, four across the bottom and one in the middle. And I'll organize and space those out so it looks nice um, uh, when it's uh, uh, when the visual is up. So here I go. Uh, this one you just drill all the way through, no magic. Um, small hole. You can go a little faster. Little risk of of um, cracking the plexi. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing here in a minute. Um, I'll get these holes drilled pull off the, um, uh, the protect protective coating and you'll kind of see the finished product. Okay, we're back at uh, my control panel. I've opened it up. So before we had looked at that and I showed how it flips the switches, now I've opened it up. And we're gonna talk about a couple things. Um, first, I had showed the wood I used to make the frame for the control panel. And um, the only thing, two things that I wanted to point out here. One, you can see how I've mitered the edges at 45 degrees. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I glue and staple these together. Um, and then 
when they're dry, I mount them with these uh, with four L brackets um, to the facade. So very simple um, construction and works great. The other reason for showing the inside is really, I think, at, at the heart of um, this whole video, which is the wiring and, and how it all operates. Um, as I, one thing I, I do want to point out, I was showing you earlier the, uh, uh, all the materials needed for making this happen, and I forgot about the wire. Um, I had made the comment that I wanted to minimize the amount of wire. Um, you certainly can't eliminate it, um, but as you can see, it's, it's, there's not much in here and there's a lot going on. So I think I've done a really good job of hitting that design goal of simplifying and minimizing my wiring, especially underneath uh, my layout. I use six different colors of wire. Um, the first three against this white background are um, what I'm using um, to from the mini panel to my toggle switches. Um, the yellow and white um, each will go into the mini panel and each are connected with um, a particular programming command and the green is the, com uh, the ground wire. Um, and then the other three wires, the red, blue, and black, are being used to um, control the LED, uh, my LEDs. Um, the red and the black uh, corresponding to the uh, track buses that they're connected to, and the blue will go to one of the single, will be one of the outputs of the single pull double throw um, outputs on my tortoise, from my tortoise switch machines. I'll show a little bit of that in a diagram in a minute. Maybe that'll make a little more sense. And then the other thing I wanted to point out, again, is how I use those terminal blocks to organize my wiring. Again, you can see everything is, is quite simple. The only, what's really, really great about this, the only, uh, there's only three wires, actually two wires, uh, that are going into uh, my layout. So behind, uh, behind here to make all this happen. Everything else is done right here at this scene. I have a red and a black coming in up here. Um, and that's it. So um, um, like I said, that, that was one of my goals was to minimize wiring, especially under the layout. I have a lot going on down there. So um, I think I've accomplished that quite well. Here is a, a PDF um, that I um, made of how I wire the layout, and I'll share this um, so that you can, because um, I'll walk through it, but you know, if you're like me, it's sometimes it's hard to pick it all up. There's a lot of information I'm sharing. Um, so I, I think this really does capture everything in a nice diagram that, that I've done. Um, Everything is very consistent and organized throughout all my control panels. Same process, always. All starts at the switch um, and the control, um, and the control motor that controls the switch, um, which I, I like to use the Smail control motors, uh, switch motors, I should say, and next to them underneath every, you know, underneath the layout is a six terminal block. I always wire my, uh, um, these, the motors to a block and run everything from there. It's just a good way of, I mean, you could do that directly from uh, the switch machine, but um, you'll, I mean, I think you'll see online, most people prefer these, this idea of using a terminal block. If you need to change out wires, um, very easy to do. Um, uh, in this method. Um, not going to, well, I think one comment I do want to make, why do I use Smail and not just a regular tortoise machine? Um, you can use the tortoise machines, um, but if you do, you need some way of assigning a DCC address to that switch machine. And with the Smail, these are programmable. Um, I can put my DCC addresses right in. That's important because 
that's what's being programmed into the mini panel. And that's why we don't need any wires from here to here to make that happen. So um, if you're using NCE and you're using the tortoise switch machines, you can use um, something like their switch eight that they provide as a way of creating DCC addresses for all of your tortoise switches. Um, in my, uh, as I think people that work with these know each, um, all the tortoise switch machines, whether it's the tortoise or the snail, um, act as two single pole double throw switches. Um, I use one of those outputs, um, position four, um, four and five are your two outputs. I always use four for my, um, frogs. I do wire all my frogs and position five, um, I use for the LED. Um, one comment I'll make on these LEDs, they are tricky. Um, you, you want to wire your LED directly to the switch uh, machine because if you change your, um, you know, uh, throw your switches using the cab um, rather than the toggle, uh, then if you've wired it directly to the switch machine, your LED will change on the control panel. So regardless of how you throw the switch, um, the LED will change when the switch changes. Um, if you were to try to wire the, your LED um, direct just from the toggle switch, it, the, the LED light won't change when you change it any other method like using your cab. And um, so that's why I do it that way. Um, but everything is, is outlined here, all the, you know, the wiring approach. Um, and uh, it is complicated, but I think I've made it very simple. Um, and I shared a lot of information in this video, but um, I will share those two documents, one, the, the material document that I use, and secondly, this, this, uh, this particular diagram. And um, in the end, I think you end up with a, a very um, uh, simple-ish uh, uh, control panel that's uh, easy to use, and they, I think they look great. And um, yeah, and I've had a lot of luck with them. So that's my video for today. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, watching, and I hope to share some more.